Hi, my name is Lucas Weekly, and while I've been in these engineering classes here at Ember-Riddle, I've been having all of these cool ideas that I want to be testing out that I've been learning in class. And ideally, I'd like to have one plane that I could kind of configure to test all of these ideas. And so that's what we're going to be building today. And along with doing this build today, I also want to explore this idea that I've been having for a while, which has to do with the incidence angle of the wing. You know, I was trying to think of a better name for this airplane, but I really couldn't come up with one. So let's start building Buster the test plane. Now, the design of this airplane is pretty straightforward. I kind of laid out everything in 2D CAD first to just check the dimensions, but I decided on making this plane pretty big. It has a four inch wide by six inch tall fuselage with an overall length in the fuselage about 40 inches and a wingspan of now about six feet. So it's a pretty big airplane. And the reason why I did this is because I wanted it to fly more like a full size airplane and behave a little bit better in air than a smaller model would. The size of this plane also means that it'll be easier to observe changes in flight performance and then will also be more space inside the fuselage for modifications in the future. So what makes this airplane configurable for all the different projects that I want is this central fuselage. It's 16 inches long, it's double layer of the foam board, and it's totally covered in packing tape. And what this allows it to do is to take in different components, they slot in or they can slide in different modules, things like that, and then they just get taped onto this fuselage, which is very secure. And this makes it very versatile and customizable. I've also included this 3D printed wing mount grid, which is just basically a grid of these lock nuts and allows me to tune the center of gravity and aerodynamic center of the airplane by moving the wing around to different spots. Now to design these 3D printed sections, I'm using a program called Onshape. It's a totally free online based CAD software that's just as powerful as some of the CAD software that I use here at Ember Riddle and also at some of my aerospace engineering jobs. And even if you want to use it for commercial purposes, it's incredibly cheap, which I'm again, not sponsored by this company, but I'm really excited about it because it's just an, a way that I can actually get into CAD right now without having to actually pay like $8,000 for a program. But so for the tail, the elevator also has an incidence of angle adjustment. So then I can change its incidence with the wing, which is what we're gonna be testing in today's episode. And that mount was 3D printed, although I did really overbuild that and it made the plane pretty tail heavy. And the nose of this airplane is pretty special. I realized looking at the Maker Trainer 1 that its fuselage is exactly four by six inches, which is what this one is. And so I kind of just copied the PDF plans from the original Maker Hangar series, and I put the nose on this plane. And uh, yeah, if you're gonna plagiarize someone, it's best to do it to yourself. <laughs> Now the wing is pretty basic. It's just an Armin wing style plane with a spar running down the middle of it. And I decided to make this a quad motor airplane and uh, because I had the motors and why not? Now, because I needed to change the angle of the wing, I kind of just left it just being that one spar in the middle holding the two wing halves together, which I very quickly realized was definitely not enough to keep the wings from warping. And the problem with this is that I wouldn't be able to control the roll of the airplane if the wings twisted too easily. This is what's known as a roll reversal, where the deflection of the aileron actually twists the wing enough that the leading edge goes in the opposite direction that you wanted the airplane to roll in, and this causes the airplane to roll unpredictably. And with a plane this big, I didn't want that to happen, so I designed really quickly and printed out these wing braces, which I would just tape onto the fuselage. And later on, I realized that this actually displays the angle of incidence onto the side of the fuselage a lot more easily than just looking at the wing. So that was a kind of bonus too. Once I finished doing all the wiring, which was a lot for those four motors, then this plane was actually really, really heavy. For only having a five foot wingspan in this version of it, it weighed five pounds or about five pounds, which is incredibly heavy. And I was really glad that I put on the four motors. <laughs> Now, before we go fly buster, let's talk about what we're gonna be testing. So the wing incidence angle is the angle at which the wing is mounted onto the fuselage. Now, by calculating the coefficient of lift and coefficient of moment of this airplane based on its geometry, aerodynamic center, the CG, and other parameters based on the airplane, you get this relationship between the angle of attack of the fuselage, the wing incidence angle, and the tail incidence angle. And now we can't solve for all three of them for any best case scenario. So what we do as the engineer is we just pick any one of them that suits our needs best 
and then this relationship will give us the other two values. So for instance, I can choose to say that I want my wing to be mounted on the fuselage at a zero degree angle of incidence. This would be easier for me to assemble and I don't need to make a special spar or whatever. But this does mean that the fuselage will always be flying at a one to two degree angle of attack on cruise. And this is because the wing always needs some angle of attack against the oncoming air to fly levelly. And while the wing is mounted at some positive angle, the tail is usually either mounted levelly or at some negative incidence angle because it always needs to have some kind of a up elevator effect to keep the nose up during cruise. And this again is dependent on the geometry of the airplane. So now if I want the fuselage to be at a zero degree angle of attack, then I need to mount the wing at a one to two degree or three degree angle of incidence, depending on the geometry of the airplane. And this is how most airplanes are designed, especially when the prop is on the fuselage, like any single engine aircraft. And even still some aircraft mount their wing at a much higher angle of incidence, about five to six degrees, and this actually tilts the fuselage down while in cruise, which makes it easier to look over the nose, and this is more of a military application. Now, any one of these variables can be picked for any of your purposes, and then the other ones are calculated. And ever since I realized that we as the engineer have some decision over this, I've always been curious, what would happen if you picked a really absurd angle of incidence for the wing so that the fuselage is flying at this crazy angle of attack? Okay, so after being a little bit sleep deprived, after building late into the night, I went out the next morning to go test out this plane. And for the first flight, I just wanted to fly it in a straight line just to see how everything was working. And I mounted the wing and the tail at a zero incidence angle. And that's how I normally have all of my RC planes set up anyway. I just use the trim to kind of adjust them as I need them. So I have the plane set up like this, I do the first launch and it works great except for I realize that the plane is very very heavy and it doesn't glide very well. But that's okay, under power it flies great. So after that first flight I adjusted the CG a little bit and then I took it off for a real flight and I turned it around the field, flew it around a couple circuits. I did notice that it needed a bit of up trim since it was kind of nosing to the ground a little bit. And this could have been solved if I added a little bit of negative tail incidence, which is what we expect. And if you look really closely you can notice how the fuselage is actually flying at a slightly pitched up angle. It's really hard to see, but there's a couple shots, a couple passes where you can notice it. And this is also what we expected, so that's good news for right now. Okay, then I landed the plane and I changed the angle of incidence to about two degrees, which is what I was expecting the plane to need for the fuselage to cruise levelly. Once I took it off in this configuration, the plane flew pretty much the same, except for I needed a bit of down trim, since I guess I adjusted the incidence of the tail a little bit too much up, and I could have left it pretty much in the same position. Now for these tests, I'm actually setting the incidence of the tail pretty much parallel with the wing, since I don't really have a really accurate way of getting the angle between these two surfaces, and I, I can just fix it with trim in my controller while I'm flying. The fuselage flew more levelly this time, and you can actually see it in a couple of these shots, like right there. Look how level that got. Okay, so now for the really cool test. Now I'm changing the incidence of the wing to about 30 degrees and making the tail about parallel with that. <laughs> yeah, about there. <laughs> It'll be flying around like that. That happened. Well, that was it. Woo. Buster looks pretty mean with an eye patch now, though. Yeah, if there was any indication that props are dangerous. <laughs> so, what happened? Well, I made a really rookie mistake, and I didn't change the CG when I changed the incidence of the wing. I should have put the CG much farther forward, because the effective length of fuselage actually shortened quite a bit because of that angle that it would be flying at. So the CG was way too far back, and it flipped over, and the spar broke. So I thought that was it. But, when I got back, I realized that I had an aero shaft that actually fit perfectly inside of the spar, and because the spar was still straight, I put that in, glued it in, put the wing back together, kind of bent the foam a little bit, 
and I bandaged it up and I was able to go out the next morning to test it again. So I set the angle of incidence at a less absurd angle, about 15 degrees-ish, and I made the incidence of the tail parallel with that again. And also a friend of mine came out to help me hand launch the plane so then I had control over the elevator and I could kind of hopefully correct for any um, mistakes in my CG guesstimation before it nosed into the ground. but I couldn't get it to turn at all. Oh no! It's really unstable. <laughs> So what was happening was the fuselage wanted to be level with the air because it does have some drag too, and the wings also wanted to be level with the oncoming air, so they were constantly fighting and the plane was just pitching and bucking back and forth, so I couldn't really apply too much power, and also then it was kind of just tip stalling in the turns because the plane was constantly flying at like a high alpha, so it was constantly almost stalling. So I would get it into a turn, but it was lose too much altitude and I wouldn't be able to get it around the corner. And then on the third launch, I had one of my ESC wires unplug itself and yeah this happened so definitely check if all your motors are running but anyway there we go I learned something today so it turns out that there must be a limit to the angle of incidence that you can add to a wing before the fuselage starts to create too much drag for it to work properly so anyway I'm going to be rebuilding this plane so that I can bring it to flight fest so I'm going to be giving Buster a new face and a wing and some other special things that I'll show off when I get to the event so anyway PDF plans are available below in the description on my website there are written instructions for right now on how to assemble it. I've also included all of the STL files that I used in this build, so if you have a 3D printer you can also test out this idea as well, but you don't need a 3D printer to build the plane, and also this plane can be built with whatever kind of foam that you have. Now these aren't free PDF plans, and the reason why I'm doing that is not to try to make a bunch of money. It's basically a way for you all to help support me with these projects that I'm doing. I can't really offer laser cut kits of all of these planes because I don't have that space here in my apartment. So charging for these PDF plans is a way for me to give back to you for some support that you give me without just asking for donations. So I hope you understand that. I wanna say special thanks to my dad, Kent Weekly, for coming out and helping me film and also build Buster. Also, Daryl for helping me hand launch it that one time. I did tell him that it was possible that it was gonna come back and hit him, but he was still very willing to throw the airplane. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe. I have a really cool project coming up in a couple weeks about a different kind of method for launching a glider. So definitely stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy. And I'll see you next time.